Uh, you all have received or should have received the course objectives, so I won't spend much time on them, but uh, here they are, and this will help you focus your listening. Uh, at some point during the lecture, we'll review the acoustic reflex pathways, and hopefully you'll be able to describe them by the end of the one hour. Um, I'll be emphasizing the many advantages of acoustic reflex measurement in clinical audiology, and uh, I don't think you'll have any problem listing four of them. And we'll also identify the value of using acoustic reflexes in different patient populations. Uh, now, I'm going to assume most of you are not now doing this, and I'm hoping, really hoping that by the end of this hour, and as you think about this lecture and the information that you're getting, you will start using acoustic reflexes on a regular basis in almost all of your patients, but certainly in these patient populations that we're going to talk about. Next slide. So um, we will be covering these topics, <clears throat> and I can't promise you that each item here listed will, will take exactly the amount of time I put down, but it will uh, roughly follow this, this uh, time-ordered agenda. Um, and we're going to start out with um, the long clinical tradition of uh, admittance measurement in general and acoustic reflexes in particular, and we'll wrap uh, um, up at the very end with a, a little discussion of the relatively new CPT codes, uh, which are used, at least in the United States, for billing uh, in, in clinical settings, and I'll do a quick, quick summary. My goal, and I'll be keeping an eye on the clock, my goal is to finish the formal lectures um, by five, five minutes before the hour. So to take roughly 55 minutes, or maybe from now, 50 minutes for the actual lectures, so that you will each uh, have an opportunity to ask a question. And if that isn't possible, if there's not time for all the questions, if we, if we have enough, then we will take care of that by email uh, after this lecture. 